This video was made in cooperation with Fiasco. If you guys want to see more quality guides like this one, go check out his channel. Before I get into the applications, there are four ways to perform this. The first one is no charge. Second is charge byte. Third is full charge. And the fourth is charge shot. No charge can be performed by simply tapping B. Charge byte can be performed by inputting B and immediately inputting B again to charge the byte. Full charge requires you holding B until the full charge shot and bite are released. And with charge shot, you must hold B until the full shot comes out, then release B before you charge the bite. As you charge the shot, the damage, hit stun, and knockback will increase. This also applies for charging the bite. The longer you charge, the more damage and knockback it will have. At mid percentage, fast fall forward air to full hop dragon fang shot is a true kill combo. Although for some reason, the counter does not recognize the last hit as a true combo. This is just a bug really, because there is no way for the opponent to escape the last hit. Anyways, while performing this combo, notice how if you charge the bite fully, it won't hit the opponent. However, if you charge the bite halfway, the last hit will connect and still kill. Also note that mashing does not affect the stun duration. Dragon Fang Shot is also amazing against opponents that are hanging on the ledge. If you stand this distance away from the ledge, you can cover all the ledge options. Regular get up, attack, roll, and jump. And even if they try to jump earlier, they'll get hit by the shot. The only way to really avoid this is by hanging and then punishing. Although, remember that after the shot, Corrin can still charge the bite and punish your attempt on punishing. So try to react on whether Corrin is charging her bite or not. At 0% from a distance, there are no real follow-ups. Although if you are close enough and you hit a charge shot, you can combo into a dash attack. and at 90 to 100%, you can stun lock certain fast fallers. To pull this off, shoot an uncharged shot at about this distance. Then dash, and remember to dash further than a foxtrot so you won't get the skid. After you've dashed, let go of the analog stick and shoot another shot. The only reason to do this is to get your opponent closer to the blast zone. The Dragon Lunge is an interesting mechanic. It has long range, able to pin to the ground, walls, any platform, and pins opponent within range. There are two parts to the Dragon Lunge. One is the hop, and the other is lands. Once you land a Dragon Lunge, there are four different options. Front kick, back kick, jump, and cancel. To activate the front kick, 
you can use A, B, the stick in any direction, or the analog stick forward. For the back kick, you can only use the analog stick in the opposite direction. For jump, you can either use your jump button or the analog stick upwards. And for the cancel, you simply have to wait about 2 seconds. You can go into a dragon lunge immediately by canceling Corrin's hop animation. This is one of Corrin's best tech and is called Instant Pin. This tech allows Corrin to instantly pin to the ground, whether it's from running, in the air, or being idle on the ground. The easiest and most reliable way to perform this is by sliding your thumb to the A button immediately after inputting side B. Instant Pin comes out in 8 frames and deals 19% damage, which is amazing considering it has long range and can be safe on some opponents. Instant Pin is also designed to punish rolls. If you Dragon Lunge onto an opponent's shield, you can back kick to not get punished. Most of the cast won't be able to punish this. Only the faster characters can barely punish it. You can also punish it if you have a really quick projectile. Or a quick up B out of shield. You can mash out of Dragon Lunge, which makes cancel and jump punishable. So I recommend instantly going for a kick. Dragon Lunge is really good at punishing the opponent's recovery. as well as tether recoveries. And if you have good timing, you can even punish the two frames of vulnerability. You can also pin to the stage to stall, and then time the kick to punish recoveries. If you miss punishing the recovery, you can try punishing the different glitch options. Regular get up, attack, roll, or jump. Although each option requires an individual timing to punish correctly, and if you stay for too long, you can get punished yourself. So if you don't want to take a risk and punish the opponent, you can always instantly kick onto the stage and be safe. For applications out of the hop animation, you can ledge and edge cancel. This allows Corrin to slide and cancel the dragon lunge, leaving her lagless to do anything. And if you don't slide off, you'll end up with landing lag. You can also use the hop animation to catch the ledge. You can also Dragon Lunge to the top of a platform underneath from a full hop for safe spacing or as a mix-up. The Dragon Lunge can be edge cancelled off any stage or platform. All you have to do is jump and side B as you slide off the edge. And finally, Dragon Lunge can also be platform cancelled. This is done by standing near the edge of a platform. Hit down and instantly roll your analog stick quarter circle forwards and press B. When Corrin charges her forward smash, her sword becomes an active hitbox. It can be charged up to 12 hits and finish off with a forward smash. If Corrin decides to stop charging and unleash her forward smash, the opponent will have 4 frames where he can act. At the 5th frame, the forward smash hitbox comes out. This means that you can air dodge the last hit. Although for it to be successful, you need to SDI upwards and air dodge. Just to clarify, SDI means Smash DI, 
and it helps you get out of attacks with multiple hits. You can SDI by either tapping the analog stick or by rubbing it. If you don't SDI upwards, you will be too close to the ground and air dodging will be pointless since you will land too soon and still get hit by the forward smash. If you are really good at SDIing out, you can even jump out of it no matter when Corrin unleashes the forward smash. You can cover all of the ledge options with a reverse charge the forward smash, regular get up, attack, jump, and roll. But remember that if you get caught in it, you can just SDI out. With Dragon Ascent, there are three options. Doing a normal Dragon Ascent, extending it with forward momentum, or holding against it with backwards momentum. You also gain invincibility at frame 10 to 17. At 0% on some of the cast, Corrin can get a guaranteed forward air after a down throw. This only works if the opponent DIs towards Corrin, or doesn't DI at all. If you DI away, Corrin won't be able to follow up, and other than that, Corrin doesn't really have anything out of her grabs. Down throw and up throw can kill, although up throw kills a little bit earlier. Corrin relies a lot on true combos. The main combo starters are forward air, up air, and neutral air. Down tilt and up tilt can also be a combo starter at certain situations. Thank you so much for watching guys. Make sure to share this video and hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed watching it. Next up is Zelda and Ike, which are already being worked on. I want to make this channel kind of like a library for how to fully play each character in depth. Which character would you like to see next? Please let me know in the comment section below and the character with the most requests will be worked on immediately. You ready for this?